All right, who's going to? So we thought we'd do an intro for everybody will do an intro about their show first. You guys want to start? Yeah, sure. All right, well, All right. have at it. I'm Dan. And I'm Ben. And we're with Spice Radio Huntsville, the local music podcast and live stream filmed right here in good old Huntsville, Alabama. Yeah, we're all about recording local people, uh, giving them a shot to do some live uh, entertainment on the interwebs, but also give them some free recording time. So, yep. All right, I'm Tom with No Huntsville. We've been doing a video cast for the last four or five years now. It's the art and culture show for uh, Huntsville, Alabama, and we do that through interviews and covering live events. And we also kind of are branching out to uh, um, do the uh, new thing called the Fret Shop se Sessions, where we have bands come in and play and get recorded by the uh, Fret Shop. And uh, we start putting that out uh, as well. And we have some bigger plans here coming up in the future for the podcast, too. Secret. Secret, Secret plans, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, I'm Bill uh, with Uprising, brand new podcast uh, supporting local music. We have a ton of musicians in Huntsville that, that get a lot of um, like playtime. We see them out in venues and stuff. We just don't know who they are. So I want to uh, interview them and, and understand their, their past, their influences, where, they're, where they've been, where they're going, uh, where they are now, that kind of thing. Yeah, so I've got a YouTube channel, <laughs> a Facebook page, and all kinds of other stuff. Five episodes in, brand yeah. new, so check yeah. it out. I'm Jesse Andrews, and I run People of Huntsville with my partner, Tessa Hornsby. Um, it's basically just a podcast about human resilience and how it's so nice and easy to put the best parts of your life out on social media or in the world, but it does not change the fact that everybody's going through something. And I, I just think it's really healthy to share that and kind of make it this non-taboo topic to just talk about, like, okay, my child died, or... I've been raped, and it's really uncomfortable, but it brings people so deeply together because you realize you can learn from each other's struggles. It doesn't just have to be like, oh, my life is great, and I'm drinking beer, and I'm going to the beach. You know, It's like, no, life is real, and it's hard, and I just think it's important to create a safe space where you can discuss that. Yeah. I don't know how I'm going to follow that up. <laughs> <laughs> Yours is more fun. Than Man. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, um, we've covered too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So at, uh, my name is Tim Miller. I host the podcast In Tune with T-Mill, along with Marcus Sims and J.Q. Ellis. JQ. Uh, the podcast is about, it's a place to think out loud, change the status quo. And through that, we talk to musicians, we talk to educators, we talk to people in the community, neighbors, people we all know about some of the ideas we have in our heads, about some of the things we want to change. And every now and then we'll have some music, we'll have entertainment, things like that. But we all have things that we want to change. We all have these opinions and thoughts. So In Tune with T-Mill is that place to think out loud, you know, and, and explore ideas together. Yeah. So why don't we uh, reverse back through here, Tim? Why don't you tell everybody why you started it in the first place? What got you thinking that a podcast would be right for what you wanted to get out in, in front of Punsville? I, I think that's perfect, Tom. You have to think about the why you're doing it. And right. for me, I got tired of seeing people complain just about <laughs> yeah. problems and issues. And it's like, what are we doing about it? I get it. We It sucks. But what are we doing about it? Because if we're not going to do anything about it, I don't want to hear about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so there was this old movie. I don't know. It may have been Sean Connery or somebody, but he says, okay, now, now that you know, what are you going to do about it? And so that's where the podcast came from. And because of my own wanting to know how to do things, how to, uh, how things work, the best way to learn is, and to save money is to have someone talk about it. So if I want to learn how to create a podcast, I could either pay for a master class or go to school, or I could find someone that does it really good and does it better than I do and interview them about it mm. and then figure it out. So that's the why mm -hmm. on, again, I wanted to find a place or facilitate a place to think about those ideas out loud and not be afraid of opinions. And we can have opposing opinions, but let's come up with, with a solution and not just a soapbox and we just talk <laughs> about problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. And Jesse? Yeah, it's like solution oriented. You bring multiple amazing minds together and then you can like come together with this even better idea of how to solve something. I think that's awesome. Um, the main reason why I wanted to start mine was just because I found out in my life that whenever I would meet with somebody new, I would immediately get way too personal with them and they were like just wanting to talk about clothes or <laughs> something very shallow and I would be like, 
going way too deep with it, to be honest with you. So I was like, I need an outlet for me where I can just talk to people on like a very deep level and get past the crap of life. And that's pretty much it. And, and then the person that I was talking to about it, she was just like, yeah, I want to be a part of this too. Because she had just lost her fiance suddenly. Mm-hmm. Like within 24 hours, he had passed away. And she had never known anybody who had gone through something like that because the situation was just very traumatic and very involved. So she was driven to do that. I know I can say this on behalf of her, but to basically help people connect to other people who need it. Because when you go through something, it's not always easy unless you just go to therapy to connect with somebody else who's willing to talk about their stuff. I feel like mine is much more of a downer than yours is. This is very inspiring, but it actually is quite happy whenever people come. You know, everybody's like at the end hugging and I don't know. Positive. Man, mine is so shallow. It's <laughs> <laughs> fun. Uh, well, my, one of my best friends in the world, Alan Little, who started Listen Local some years ago, I went to maybe this first or second Listen Local show, and uh, there's Rob Aldridge and Microwave Dave and Jim Cavender and Dave Anderson and I'm and uh, uh, Charlie Howell and I'm getting those mixed up. That was like one and two, but anyway. So you're, you're sitting in the audience and you're watching these guys who live within miles of the BBC, but there are people in this room that are watching them play that don't know who they are. I mean, I guess they assume yeah. that they're, they're from around here because it's called Listen Local. We have a lot of people who move into town that don't realize that we have an incredible wealth of talent in this, in this city. And so you watch Alan Little play and you watch Dave Anderson play. Dave, who, who has an amazingly... Uh, broad and incredible career in music. Microwave Dave, uh, you know, speaks for himself. I mean, these these are just incredible people. And so you listen to their music and it's great. So I'm like, Alan, p- these people in the audience need to know, like, where they came from. Like, why do they do what they do? They're working musicians. That is an incredibly difficult thing to do, and you got to love what you do. Anyway, so I'm like, Alan, we, we sit down and have coffee. I'm like, dude, you need to have, like, an extra hour before Listen Local, that's just like an in-depth interview, like a Kurt Loder MTV style thing. And he's like, yeah, you do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, all right. So that's how, it, that's how it started. And then, you know, probably like you guys, I really want, the want is there. The how, no clue. Mm-hmm. And so you just sit down in front of a mic, which is I'm sure how you kind of started too. It's like, mm. I, I got this $50 mic, and, and then you record one episode, and then you forgot to turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> then you go to the oh, second yeah. episode, and you're like, okay, oh, yeah. the lighting's terrible. <laughs> or then you just work it out. But the thing is, is you know, I just wanted to get to the, the kind of like what you're saying, is the nuts and bolts of what make people do what they do, because that's going to make Huntsville a richer place. Yeah. It's not just about entertainment. It's about depth of character and about why we do what we're doing. Um, so, yeah. I think uh, that's similar to, t- to Tim and Bill here. That that's how I started mine too. I, I got sick of hearing people say there was nothing going on here. Mm, uh-huh. I moved away to California after uh, school here, and I was gone for ten years in Southern California. And I came back and visited, and I saw the difference of when I was going to school here, and just how Huntsville was starting to grow up, and the breweries were just starting to come around. And, and um, so I moved back, and I was excited about all the growth and all the new things to do. And I'm a big podcast um, listener, and there's this podcast called Stuff You Should Know, and they break yeah. down mm-hmm. an, uh, a subject for 45 yeah. minutes, and two dudes just talk about it. And the way that No Huntsville originated was going to be us going out to, like, the Space and Rocket Center, or going to the Botanical Gardens, or going to Bird on the Mountain and doing stuff, and then reporting back on it. And then we realized that takes a lot of time and money. So we thought, you know, we'll just get somebody in to talk about it. Yeah. And then mm. with the breweries, I, I kind of knew a come of the, some of the brewers. I thought... I'm pretty sure we could drink beer while we did this yeah. and probably yeah. did it for free. Yeah. Yeah. And so then it just kind of um, spun from there. But after a while, it became almost selfish, too, because I got introduced to people and to things that I never would have gone on right. to my own, right? Um, I, I, I use the uh, Harlequin Jazz Band as one of the bands uh, I probably yeah. would never have heard or listened to. It's just not in uh-huh. my genre. But watching you guys play is amazing. And um, then the Cold Boys, right? This is a whole other genre that I would have never been tapped into unless I was in the middle of it somehow. I mean, um, so being in the mix of it, meeting these people, has completely broadened what I thought I had was a a pretty broad sort of um, sense of culture and sense of, um, um, you know, uh, the different things that I was into. But it's really opened that up. So it's become a selfish sort of thing. But 
um, I see that, you know, and, and the way I, the reason I named it No Huntsville is because I was just going to capture this market. We weren't going after the, the country. We weren't going after the world. Mm. We were going to really be focused, um, you know, just around here. And I thought, you know, even if it doesn't get big or anything, the people that come on it would find value in it, right? Mm -hmm. Even if it's their own families, the only ones watching the damn show, that's kind of cool. That's the, if this is our own thing that we get to be a part. It's like the small town newspaper. Yeah. You and everybody's exactly. stoked on yeah, being yeah. in this. Who right. cares that you're in the small town? Well, they care. <laughs> yeah. This is my yeah, town. Yeah. This is where I get to represent and kind of take some pride in something that you might not have taken pride of before. Mm -hmm. So oh, for sure. So that's where we kind of, um, you know, came about it, and it's evolved. Like yeah, Bill is saying, you kind of trip up and turn the camera off and on when you shouldn't have, and <laughs> oh, I can't use any of that crap. We've had a, plenty of those, or when right. I've had good interviews and I just didn't <laughs> tape it right, you know. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get plenty of those, but everybody's been really cool, supportive. All these podcasts have helped uh, each other, so it's been this really kind of cool new culture that I kind of pushed myself and emerged myself into, and it, it's just been really fun. Well, awesome. I'm hearing a theme here because yeah. like. Uh, I think everybody, when you when you say, like, oh, I'm from Huntsville, Alabama to somebody, they're like, oh, you're from Alabama, do you wear shoes? Right. right. And then, like, oh, they, or they think, oh, you're from Huntsville, do you, like, shoot rockets or, like, design missiles? But I Nick think everybody Fury's here. Nick Fury's from Huntsville, Alabama. What's that? <laughs> Nick Fury's from Huntsville, Alabama. Yeah. 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 We, got, we got some credit out there. But I, I think uh, we're all about the undercurrent of Huntsville because we, I don't know, for, for me, I grew up here and I knew musicians. I knew the culture was here. That it and it's just something just totally foreign to somebody who doesn't that doesn't know what's going on here, and uh, for us, Spice Radio was it was the same thing. Getting sick of people pigeonholing like this is Huntsville, Alabama. This We're is saying there's I'm, nothing good on the radio. Right, mm -hmm. right. You hear yeah, you hear the local radio, and, and it's like we know these musicians playing amazing music, doing amazing art, doing interesting things from all different types of mm -hmm. genres. And uh, we just wanted to be there to give them a time to shine and, and some decent product too, because we've I think Wanda Weselowski was our one of our first one interviews. of our first ones, yeah. And she is and she was I don't even know how old she was, she was like 17, 18, 17, 18. And she, she was, was writing young. songs that are like these are like make your something heart like thirty five or these are something that right. should be on you know should be all over. And she had some laptop recordings, mm -hmm. and we're like this is not justice, like, this is something we have to fix. And yeah. we, luckily, Dan had the know-how, and I had the space, so we're just like, we gotta, we gotta try and uh, show up for our local musicians. So yeah. That's how we got started, I guess. Originally, we weren't even gonna do recordings, just nobody had anything, and there wasn't really a place for people to go. I think WLRH had really, Brad Posey had just started his show, and I know yeah. uh, Nate City. from, mm -hmm. uh, listen, uh, Sorry, from Valley Sounds had had done his thing on TAK for a few years before that, but other than that, there was yeah, nothing. Right. There was no support from the local radio, and there wasn't really a library of local tracks out there that people could get access to. So we said, well, we might as well just start recording them ourselves. And we, and we thought it was going to be like, oh, we'll do six months. We'll do you know some good. Recording. We're going to run out of people. Done. Yeah. And now it's five years. <laughs> and later. now you have a festival. Oh, cool. Yeah. Right. And yeah, and, and, and we're still booked up like two or three months in advance. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's amazing how much people are just how much talent's just in the woodwork around here. It's, oh, it's for insane. Sure. Right. Have you guys find it interesting that uh, there is no lack of content? So I don't ever have a problem with finding somebody to come on the show, ever. <laughs> no. Like, I literally have to push people away or yeah. say that I, I'm booking out into yeah. June, July, mm -hmm. August. Mm -hmm. That's pretty, I mean, that says a lot about the city, no? I mean, yeah, for sure. Just that there's always, I mean, and I can call somebody up and, like, if someone drops out on me, I can call somebody up and replace them. Like, that, like, <laughs> yeah. like it's no big deal. So that's, sure. that's what I found has been interesting, the, 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 the um, non-lack of content that we can pull from here. Well, in I'll tell you something that I think we're also, uh, is a running theme and related to what you just said, is that Huntsville, by definition, is based on your, on your particular point of view. So mm -hmm. when I started this, and I, again, I'm only five episodes in, okay, so I'm a baby, but uh, I know a bunch of old white guys. What? I know. In Huntsville, <laughs> Alabama? In Huntsville. What? And, but when you, put, when you open a channel, like when you open a way to be seen, suddenly uh, Huntsville becomes a much bigger place than you thought it was. Yeah. Suddenly oh, yeah. the yeah. talent pool is, no. is opened yeah. up to I me. Mean, you go to Spice Fest, we, we were, you know, we were at last night, and on stage is suddenly their Huntsville looks way different than mine. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's our responsibility <clears throat> to kind of turn that around and say, Okay, you know, Mr. and Mrs. South Huntsville, here's what really is going on. Mr. and Mrs. North Huntsville, this is really what's going on. Mm -hmm. And now suddenly, we have not only people that want to come on the show, but people who want to see the talent pool is just like expanded tremendously. 
it's amazing how that happened like just like that yeah and people are proud to say they're from Huntsville now yeah that wasn't the case so long ago yeah no even right. traveling and playing shows in other cities like Nashville and Atlanta people are you know people know about us and now. people we get contacted all the time like oh we want to be on Spice Fest or we want to do local shows and uh, people like Coffee Black that are Florence based they say well people think we're a Huntsville band because we get we do so much good shows here and mm -hmm. the crowds are always so good mm -hmm. and it's like you might think you might think like just you going to a show and being enthusiastic for a, uh, an artist isn't a big thing, but to them sometimes that's like yeah. makes their year. Sometimes sure. it makes their life. Sure. You know, a great show can change somebody's outlook on their art. Right. And I think what's happening is that Huntsville is becoming um, a more destination spot, especially around the music scene. So the music scene has been picked up in the last couple of years. I think uh, that the catalyst, some of that could have been. Um, this uh, music audit that was going on mm -hmm. and um, it kind of spurred some ideas and spurred some conversations that I think are going to be um, really helping to get it so that people or bands are starting to put this city as part of their touring mm -hmm. uh, dates, right? Sure. I mean, yeah. we're, we're starting to now, we're going to have the venues here soon, very, very soon here very soon. Oh, yeah. that we used to have that uh, that's going to continue to make that possible. So I think... Um, it's a, it's a lot around the city planning. It's a lot around the people understanding that there's uh, value in original content, mm -hmm. right? So getting past that smoky bar with the cover band and getting right. to real original music, I think, has been a huge boom um, for the town. I think it will continue to be, and that's an, just one other reason. I mean, we have a ton of reasons. We're, we're, we're a melting pot city. This is a very uh, engineering-focused um, city. There's a lot of disposable income. That doesn't hurt. Um, so uh, that allows us to have the breweries, allows us to have there's the nicer places yep. to put around mm -hmm. so we can kind of um, bring people into town. So focusing on some of that thing, uh, some of those aspects are going to yeah, be Yeah, you can't important. discount the brains because there's a lot of brains here. <laughs> yeah. And, like, they know how to well, do Well, every stuff brewer right. here is a NASA yeah, engineer, yeah, exactly. so that's a <laughs> They're going to do it to, like, the millionth percentile of accurate, well, you know? Sure, uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think engineers get a bad rap. They're certainly easy to make fun of. Um, I will. The black, sho <laughs> black shoes, brown belts. <laughs> that never gets old. But there's, there's a, there's a two-way street there. I think the engineers get a bad rap for not wanting to go out and do anything. You know, you get, like, the 6 p.m. when the sun goes down, everybody goes home. <laughs> they go to Outback to get their steak, and then they're then they're <laughs> then they're done. But I also think that Huntsville hasn't had a lot to offer them. So the the income mm -hmm. that they've got, these are people who have lived all over the country. Some of them all over yeah. the world. It's not that they don't like to have fun. We just didn't necessarily have the things that they wanted to do. A music scene and a cultural scene, an arts entertainment scene, is the foundation of everything. So even though they may be boring people. Uh, it's not that they want to be boring all the time. Oh they want to be boring some of the time. And we have to give them a voice and we give them opportunities to go out and have a good time and experience what we offer. Mm -hmm. Well, I think um, one thing that Huntsville, is, that I've learned, and I always knew this, is just how resourceful Huntsville is. Uh, yeah. North Alabama, just, I mean, when you think about, so every month I always look at the calendars and try to produce the show, working with the show producer, and we look at, okay, this is what's going on in April. This is what's going on in May. So whether it's education, whether it's politics, whether it's commerce, whether it's mental health, whether whatever subject you can think of and the solutions or the challenges that come with that, a lot of times I can find someone to speak to that from Huntsville. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And before I would reach out and find someone that was, you know, the, a popular per personality on Twitter or Instagram. But then it's like, We've got rock stars mm -hmm. right here yeah, in Huntsville I mean, that can speak to that, you know, that, that can make it happen. And for all of the issues that come along, I mean, there's fundraisers, there's drives, there's all these initiatives from people in Huntsville that see a problem and then come up with a solution. Mm -hmm. And it's great when you get support from the city or support from your, um, you know, your elected officials, but I'm confident in knowing that we all have the resources and the things to get it done. Mm -hmm. And it's great to have bigger support, but I've seen a lot of that happen with people from Huntsville. Well, people, <laughs> that's a good way. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, yeah, you've got people like uh, Smarter Every Day. I can't remember the, guy, the fellow's name. He's a huge, huge YouTube presence. Yeah. And then you've got Cody G. You've got, like, people that are all over the globe in Switzerland. They're, they're working worldwide, and they're right here. They, you know, they they go out to eat and they're like across from you or something, mm -hmm. and and you don't really see those treasures until you like start looking for them. And I think people are finally being like, oh yeah, Huntsville is the place to be at. <laughs> yeah.
like you guys didn't wait for a two day diverse music festival. <laughs> you guys just came up and put it together, worked with all these people, worked with the volunteers, the bands. And five years later, you know, we're still doing Spice Fest. You guys are, mm -hmm. you know, doing that. So, I mean, just the people are not waiting for something to happen. They're making mm -hmm. it happen, mm -hmm. you yeah, know, and they can do that here with the support in the community. Because you can do it all day long, but then you need the support from people mm -hmm. or the community to come out and say, yeah, we do need this. We want yeah, this. Yeah, that's an ongoing theme. It doesn't even, you know, when we have people come on, we, and there's a lot of new businesses or something, or a new brewery, which will pop up every other, <laughs> yeah. other day, but you'll find that people here in Huntsville are, are real, um, even with a sense of that's my competition, they'll still help the guys out. Mm -hmm. Brewers, they'll pass along oh, ingredients yeah. all yeah. the time when right, someone yeah. runs out of something or they'll right. help each other out. Uh, bands, certainly like that. Podcasts have certainly been like that. Um, so it's, Artists are like that yeah, all the yeah, time I'm running true. into. They're so willing to share what they do with other people. I think that's because yeah. we all know we've been in the trenches. Right. And we're like, like right. we're still in here. Know. We're, yeah. we're going to help each other it's out. It's amazing, though. Huntsville's <laughs> so great in that way. It's people are genuinely like wanting to help other people and lift other mm -hmm. people up. And that's why I love it, and that's why I don't leave. There's so many people like you guys, you know, where you just want to make something beautiful here. You don't just want to leave and go somewhere else where it already exists. To start it. Create your own utopia. And there's exactly. great food here, too. And there's great and there's food. For sure. <laughs> there, there's also good beer here, by the yes, way. Yes, Where's that? OTBX is great. Did we mention <laughs> OTBX right. at all yet? Mm, so right. good. We should mention OTBX. Great pause for a moment. <laughs> I'm just trying to slow down, because it's like, oh, get oh, all we're, these words out, syllables. We were oh, yeah. supposed to slow down. Yeah. Well, I have a question uh, for everybody to, like, uh, borrow your, your mic for a second, is uh, I am surprised at the the input that I've gotten from people who want to be on, from people who, like I, like you said about just content, like as soon as you open up this channel, suddenly you've got this inflow of people, and then you do have to kind of, you have a, a gatekeeping aspect. You do want to make sure that you put the right people mm -hmm. on at the right time. Mm. But I was completely surprised by the, just the amount of people that have something to say, that have a voice, and, and want to be in front and tell their story. Really? Now, a lot of that self-promotion, of course, but but, some of it is just really good quality stuff. And like you said, you're booked out till, till August. Yeah. I mean, did you, what was your experience with like, with people who came to you and said, hey, I want to record, and you're like, oh, great, we'll see about that. But then suddenly it's just overwhelmingly awesome. Right. And, the, yeah. and that was really, I mean, when we first started this, I, I went out, I'd been in college and kind of not playing out as much in Huntsville as I did in high school for about four or five years. So I think I went out and, uh, who was our first? Like, who was our first guy? Xavier Fry. Was Xavier Fry? There and there was. Um, oh man, that's gonna kill me later. I can't remember his name. <laughs> One of our first. Oh oh. Uh, oh on the tip of my brain too. <laughs> this is why there's two of us. It's not enough. Yeah. Right. Well, we, we, we basically. No, we we went out and we found a few musicians who were playing locally. Who Robbie who, Eichmann. Robbie Eichmann. Yeah, Robbie <laughs> Eichmann was the first guy I approached, and I told him what the idea was, and he hugged me and yeah. said, "Thank you so much. Huntsville needs this so badly." And Really, for the first two years, we just focused on getting to know or reconnecting with all the musicians that we could, and we just kept finding more and more and more and, and more. And more variety, too. And more variety than we variety ever expected. Than we ever expected. Like, but yeah, if you want to be on Spice Radio, you can find all our stuff at spiceradiohsb.org. Um, you can email us at, at spiceradiohuntsville at gmail.com, and we're on Facebook and Instagram and all those places. We love, uh, if you've got weird, really weird music, we're all about weird music. Uh, we will not. We will try to. We'll find a way to worm our way into WLRH and play some weird music for people. And T Mill has I'm challenged, still challenged us on yes. this challenge. <laughs> Look, I need the weirdest music that I can play legally <laughs> on the radio. Right, right. Legally, yeah, we because do have to keep it legal. I am going to. I'm going to try to top Spice Radio at least once because you know, every Brett and Nate they say anytime they get weird music, they know where it came from. Right. And I'm not comfortable with that. I have to have this is good, y'all. That just surprises them. They're better. like, yo, T Mill sent this in? Like, yeah, yeah, okay, cool. But you can hear it uh, live twenty four seven. We stream all local music. It's all original stuff. That's uh, the radio in Spice Radio. Yeah. It's the twenty four hour internet radio music stream. Indeed. And we do uh, pretty much every week. We've been doing sometimes two a week. Yep. Live uh, live streams with live uh, 
music. You can just log in and ask people questions. We'll look at it and be like, okay, they want to ask them this embarrassing personal question, and then they'll get all flustered. It's it's good fun. Yeah, and it's that's that's uh, Thursday nights at seven thirty is when our, we normally stream. Sometimes we'll do Saturdays at uh, around noon. Uh, we do both a live stream video and an edited podcast, which we release later after we've mixed the tracks down. Um, so you can get both the audio and video portions on our website at Spice Radio. Spice Radio Hunt HSV dot org. Awesome. Shoot. <laughs> do it again. <laughs> you say the Two website again. It's changed a few times. No, no, I think I they got it. it. Spice Radio HSV dot org. Yeah, Spice Radio HSV dot org. And uh, we're also on Podbean. We're on Spotify. Uh, any of your other streaming outlets, just look up Spice Radio Huntsville, and you'll be able to find us. Right. Okay, so uh, No Huntsville is nohuntsville dot com and Facebook forward slash No Huntsville. We're on Instagram. It's K-N-O-W, Huntsville. <laughs> no, that'll be a uh, sub-channel we're going to start. It's like, no, Huntsville. It's like anti-Huntsville. Why? 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 We actually have somebody that's going to do that. So, all right. Yes. Uh, we, we probably produce about two to three episodes a week. We film right here downtown at the uh, downtown self-storage units on the third floor. Uh, if you're looking to book our show, you can contact us at info at nohuntsville.com. There's a phone number that I can't recall, but we put at the end of each one of our episodes. You could give us a call as well. And we do a video podcast. We also do an audio version that's just for iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and all those areas as well. And, and I want to also say, we film every Tuesday, and anybody's welcome to come and watch the show. Okay. We, have a, we have a couch, and we also have seats in the hallway. We usually drink beer, so please come down and hang out and... Uh, it's always a good time. What time it's a very cool space. Yeah, Tuesday, sold. Tuesday night, yeah, yeah. 6.30. There's always interesting people there, too. It, oh, wait. Yes. So, <laughs> I don't, if you look back, we are going to, this Tuesday is a really special one, because uh, we have Microwave Dave coming on to play, oh, and he's going to promote his uh, foundation, he's going to promote uh, the Cigar Box Guitar Festival, and also Microwave Dave Day. So, th we, I've been waiting for five years to get him on, uh -huh. I got him on Tuesday, so wait, I'm really awesome. excited about that. Man, that's awesome. Yeah. When is Microwave Day Day? It is June 2019. Ah. Oh. MDD. June 2019. MDD. That's yeah, all right. There it is. All right, very good. Uh, so Uprising, uh, we, we, I, uh, record at uh, Kathy Lighton's yoga studio right across the street. Probably the best studio. Dude, it's freaking <laughs> the it's, best studio. It's One killer. of the best so, views in Huntsville. Like. The sun's going down. You gorgeous. open all the windows, and it's just it's just a beautiful, <laughs> it's a beautiful Do you environment. do yoga before you do your I, interviews? Me no yoga. <laughs> mm. I'm... Uh, I'm old, yeah, Tom. Yoga. I'm rigid. No yoga. I'm rigid. Um, you don't want to see that? You don't want to see that. Uh, it's not good. Uh, but if you, so you can find us at, uh, see, I have little stickers. It's so exciting. You're not really legit until you have a sticker. No offense to anybody. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I know what you're saying. <clears throat> yeah. Um, okay, do you know, right, know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, so you can find Uprising at Uprising HSV at Instagram. That's probably the best way to find me. We're also uprising huntsville on youtube and you can find uprising hsv on uh, facebook as well so right. want to be on the show come on come on down come i was to gonna YouTube. say are you looking for any type of like genre or anything like are you excited to like get someone or... like i said i know a bunch of old white guys so throw me anything but that and, we're, and i'm down, <laughs> I'm down. we're gonna filter through wow. some new content yeah. over here yeah all right nice. yeah so we're people of huntsville on instagram stitcher spotify Amazon, Google, all the places that you can find podcasts. And we typically don't ask people to come on. They just reach out to us saying that they have a story, which is really nice. It makes it super easy because people just, I think, want to find some sort of meaning for their struggle. So it's like, okay, if I can tell somebody else, then it's not suffering for no reason, yeah. but I can give it a meaning and help somebody else, which is actually really amazing because when people do come on, you can always tell in the beginning that they're very nervous because they're about to unfold like the darkest parts of them to mm -hmm. who who knows who's listening but anyways if you're brave enough to do that if you want to share your self with Huntsville and if you have something that you think could improve the quality of life for people listening then just contact us on Instagram at people of Huntsville that's pretty much it <laughs> it's fun though I do want to add it's not as dark as it sounds like it's very I think it's it's about suffering it's not this, no, is it's it really, anonymous or is it like it is it <laughs> Blur out our faces. Well, no, there's one, one lady that came on, and she's actually lesbian, but she's married to a man, and she wanted to be anonymous. Wow. So, Whoa. yeah, you can be anonymous, yeah, for sure, definitely. But I think a lot of people want to own it as their story, because yeah. it's yeah. like, I've gone through this, and 
I'm going to take credit for the struggles that I've yeah. gone through. Because it is, like, again, about resilience. And I, that's why I enjoy it is because it's not depressing. It's inspiring to see that people can go. Everybody's going through something. And the mm. fact that people can be bright and even be decent people in this harsh world to me if I meet somebody who's decent, it's like, okay, good for you, because you probably have so much going on that I don't know about. So I just like to hear what happens to people and how they can still have some thread of humanity inside them, because <laughs> it's harsh. You bring All right, Tim, go again. Here we go again. Here we go again. I mean, she just took it to church and then like, <laughs> just dry your eyes. And like, like, get, yeah. But yours is inspiring. Oh, like yours God. is well, amazing. So well, I actually really love yours. Well, also it's it's uh, one thing I wanted to bring up about yours is one, um, just how to congratulate the people that come on there yeah. to tell their stories. Uh, to make it possible for other people to, you know, share or relate. Mm -hmm. um, if you follow their Instagram, if you, you know, listen to the podcast, um, it's a lot of fun. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like this, you're, you're thinking it's a, I don't know, like Sad. a, you yeah. know, like a psychology, you know, <laughs> session or something. It's real good to hear people's stories, um, hear people relate. And not everyone is living this fantastic Instagram life that they're just faking it and they don't share any bad moments or challenges or tragedies or things like that. So it's good that people are giving people permission to say, look, not every one of your situations are going to be mm -hmm. perfect, but this is what I went through and, you know, making it you know possible for other people to open up. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. Um, so now yes. I feel a little bit better about going into my <laughs> um, for me, uh, again, just contact us. Uh, you can find In Tune with T Mill on your favorite podcast site or um, wherever you listen to podcasts. Just look us up, In Tune with T Mill. And we do one episode, we release one episode a week. Um, my producer, JQ, uh, is, is always on me about trying to get more content out. So we, we shoot about four or five a week <laughs> and we try to produce them to, she, I call it the Oprah production where they shoot like 10 episodes in a day mm -hmm. and then put them out. Um, also I want to shout out, uh, Melissa Therrell, which has really helped with our production and, uh, producing the episode. So that's helped out a tremendous amount to give people something to look at. Um, versus listening to, because some people like watching podcasts, right. some people like listening to podcasts. Me, I can listen to NPR and mm -hmm. No Huntsville and Spice Radio and Uprising and People of Huntsville and just ride, because I'm in the car mm -hmm. nine times out of ten mm -hmm. is where I'm consuming a lot of these podcasts. So uh, that's for me. So again, just reach out if you have a, a story to tell, if you have a uh, something that you, you have a solution for. Don't just come to us with the problems of the world and what you see wrong with everything, just come with some solutions and thinking out loud and don't be afraid for someone else to maybe think opposite of you that mm -hmm. has a, uh, you know, an opposing view. Um, and let's talk about it. Let's be positive, you know, and think out loud and change the status quo. So right. nice. uh, what I want to know from, from you guys as well and just kind of bring it back around is some of you guys, everyone's connection to downtown. I think um, a lot of us are downtown frequently. Um, you know, and there's a lot of things happening downtown. So for me, it's just I find different events that are going on downtown, a lot of people that I work with, a lot of the guests that we have on the show. Um, so that's what brings me downtown, just the culture, just the, the melting pot, so to speak, of Huntsville. You know, mm -hmm. kind of feels like the heartbeat. Um, are there some challenges? Yes. But the solution to that is I find people that are like-minded that are fighting through those challenges and bringing people together. So I don't mind, you know, being in that realm mm -hmm. and, and doing that. So for, you, so for you guys, what's your downtown, you know, connection? Yeah, I live really close to downtown and I work downtown and I did a project downtown thanks to Chad. So since then we've kind of just stayed connected and I like everything that downtown Huntsville's doing. Yeah. It's very like, they're kind of the same way. It seems like they see this open space where they can make something better. You know, maybe there's not a problem to solve necessarily, mm -hmm. but it's like, what could we do that would be really cool and make it yeah. more fun to just walk around and yeah. just like exist in Huntsville. And yeah, I, I just love it here because we're located at Clinton Row, which is the, I guess, the same place that no Huntsville's the downtown the self storage floor, units. Yeah. yeah, yeah, downtown. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, I just live here. I work here. I hang out here and Huntsville's great and there's so many amazing hidden people around you know you just have to yeah. scratch the surface a little bit and there's so much creativity so many amazing people yeah. 
I live here. Uh, I was born and raised here. Um, I'm a third generation business person downtown. It, the more I think about it, the more it's kind of sad. I mean, I do travel. Uh, but I just spend a lot of time. <laughs> it's not like, I mean, I was born right over there. I mean, really. Uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, downtown is, is, is also the, the kind of the center of gravity for the city in terms of yeah. our culture. Yeah. And uh, a lot of the venues are here. I mean, like you just, we've all said, this is a, this is, the, really beer started it. I, it's amazing how, how a lot of what we're building and our, our, our culture and our music is built on. The breweries are located down mm -hmm. here. A lot of the venues obviously are down here. Uh, we're becoming a real downtown um, with no small thanks to DHI. So uh, yeah, that's my connection here. It's just everything happening here. That's where you gotta be. Yeah, I agree. I moved to Five Points uh, about three years ago. I was I was living South Parkway and just driving that. It's not that big of a distance, but I mean, I, I work in Research Park. But um, I just I, I felt like every time when I wanted to go do anything, go to a nice restaurant, go into a, a good place to have a drink or eat or anything, it was always just downtown. So I said, I'm I'm going to move closer to it. And now I ride my bike. I ran downtown today. My boys come down here. All the stuff that's going on in the parks. This OTBX is probably one of my favorite places to have a drink. I'm not even kidding. And then all the new, all the new <laughs> restaurants, all the new restaurants that are opening up downtown are, are pretty amazing. Um, the BBC, the best venue, is going to be opening up very soon here. Uh -huh. The Mercantile, uh, the Poppy just opened up. Yep. I mean, on and on and on. I can't. I, I mean, this is the place to be. And this is where I want to be. And this mm -hmm. is where, I, like you said, uh, there's a good way to put it. This is the center of gravity for Huntsville. Yeah, for sure. We've definitely done a lot of events and promotion through the uh, Craft Brew Trail, I think is what they call it, and uh, worked with Yellowhammer. Our first festival was over at Yellowhammer, and now Salty Nut has been helping us out. Like, Same uh, space. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, we trans. We kind of hung around, <laughs> and luckily they didn't kick us out. But, uh, but yeah, downtown is, uh, to me, the green space of downtown has always been good for my mental health and like for the city, I feel like, because yeah. I, I grew up in Five Points. And I love the fact that I could ride my bike straight across uh, California and then don't have to deal with traffic. Mm -hmm. I'm just yeah. like, I'm there, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm, in, I'm in where uh, Huntsville starts. But yeah, the Mercantile is going to be huge. Um, I know some of the people involved doing sound and design there, which mm -hmm. makes me feel really good because he's got a heck of a reputation as a sound man. And uh, you should tell them about that because uh, it's well, going to be good. Well, first, I mean, a little bit about my history. I mean, we both grew up here, and downtown's always been the center of the really fun, interesting events in Huntsville, like Big Spring Jam, Panoply, um, just concerts in the park. I mean, it's always just been a center for really great arts and entertainment in the city, and it just seems to be growing more and more every year. And now we've got, you know, a lot of development happening downtown, a lot of new venues opening up. It's it's a really exciting time to be here, and, you know, I've, I've always loved just coming down here. I used to go to church, you know, right over there at First United <laughs> Methodist, so I have a lot of connection and a lot of uh, sentiment for downtown. And uh, now, you know, we used to go to shows at Crossroads all the time up the street from here. And now that space is becoming a music venue again, which I'm really excited about because I think it's it, that's that's the best way to use that space. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the Mercantile is going to be opening up in, uh, I'm going to say June or July because I don't want to I don't want to miss misspeak their soft opening date. But yeah, it's going to be really cool. We've got a lot of really big bands coming through. Uh, Jake Peters from Quantophonics is one of the guys helping to organize that. Uh, yeah. The company I work for, Quantum Technology, is doing all the uh, technology and the PA design. A uh, good friend of mine, Richard Smith, a guitar player I've known for you know 15 years, is actually the one who designed the system. So it's going to be really cool when it opens up. 